Добрый день. Все, кто остался, Hello. спасибо, что пришли. Hello, everyone who stayed with me. Thanks for joining me here. Доклада достаточно говорящая. The topic uh, speaks for itself. Uh, it so happened that in Avito, I manage uh, metadata. Вместо, вместе с метаданными uh, необходимо With metadata, I need to manage access to the data. Мне предстояла достаточно большая, в общем-то, челленджевая задача. So, a very challenging tasks, uh, a very challenging task I had. доступы так, чтобы limited access. Никто не So that none, none of the company complaints. Uh, but still enhance uh, uh, data security. There was a, this dilemma that I actually encountered. Very often it appeared uh, in the literature about very often data and the data availability has two features, two special features. First of all, it seems that like the more information is available to us, the easier for us to do the operations, the easier for us is to use it, but uh, sci-fi writers single out extremes, First, if you limit access to the information for the people and with only that information that they need, uh, we need to ask a question, and who is the judge who selects this information? On the other hand, if we do not limit the information, people will uh, drown in this flow of information and we will end up with the same result. So I started with the. I started as analyst, and I started analyzing the access uh, process. I started analyzing what uh, object is all like and what would be the met metrics. Uh, a bit of maths uh, for you. Here you can take a look at the green curve. So here we are seeing uh, profit from using of the data, from the use of the data. <clears throat> so the more we try to protect the data, uh, the more we complicate, uh, the more we uh, complicate the policies of data control, the less information people get, and there is a risk that the information will not reach the people when they need this. So when we provide enough information to the people, the business lives and we get profit from uh, utilizing this data. On the other hand, uh, if uh, we very strictly limit uh, the data uh, and uh, make all the processes uh, too strict, uh, then instead of uh, earning the costs for us of uh, not getting this information to the people and people not receiving this, uh, will overcome the profit. So how come this uh, curve is interesting? Because in the very beginning we receive uh, the information blindness. So when there is too much information, when people get access to everything, uh, as a result, uh, we get the downfall of profit when the people don't get the information because they simply can't find it. To control that metric, we need data catalogs and a good research engine, a good search engine which helps us uh, index the uh, data in the company, so the better, the less the uh, curve becomes, uh, the less curvy this cur curve becomes, so to speak. On the other hand, uh, the more practices we have to implement for security, uh, the worse uh, we implement them and uh, uh, the fewer rights uh, the people get and the faster this curve goes down. So it leads us to losing uh, uh, profits from storing the data that uh, we have. On the other hand, uh, we have data leak, data leak risk. It reduces as we implement different um, data protection practices, uh, so we need to implement it the way uh, so that this curve uh, resolves more 
quickly to zero and be as smooth as possible. So coming from this uh, curve, we have this area, we have the maximum damage from data leak. We have another area where we select proper policies and set limitations, and another part when when uh, getting the information becomes uh, much more expensive than using it, and it does not uh, lead us to any improvement in our security status at all. Take a look at the typical process of getting access to the information. Here's a very simple implementation. We have a user who would like to get access to the information. Uh, he or she finds out uh, how to do that. Uh, they receive uh, an application form, send it back. Uh, then um, in the department, uh, they process it, whether this uh, person needs this information, what kind of information he or she needs. Uh, then the access to the information is given to him or her, and limitations uh, are also imposed here. So the person gets this access and starts using it. After that, uh, the department would normally try to audit what kind of information has been uh, allocated. Uh, and there's an attempt occurring every once in a while that if this information has not been given to the person, to a proper person, uh, to the right person, it's a long process. It includes a few stages, uh, a few throwbacks. and. Uh, it requires a very deep knowledge in the department of what's going on and what kind of person this is. Otherwise, this becomes too long. But if you take a deeper look at this, we see that, uh, that if the information security department uh, performs uh, its functions well, they need to manage metadata. They need to have data about uh, who, how, when and uh, what for uses the data the data before they decide <coughs> to approve it analyzing the state we come up with solutions какими идеями мы будем руководствоваться для того чтобы эти проблемы нивелировать to resolve these problems. First of all, the policies. The more policies we have, the instructions uh, of who to give this data to, who not, who not to give to the, the worse. Because you know that any policy looks uh, really horrible at first, looks scary when people don't get access just because they don't have some kind of a role from the role of a role. Or sometimes uh, somebody is in the wrong role and then through this person, this information gets to other people. So the fewer the incidents uh, we get when we come up uh, with the KISS uh, solution, uh, the simpler the rule uh, the simpler the architecture of in implementing this rule, uh, the less complicated it is, uh, the less is the chance that it will lead us to the errors. Context is the next thing. Uh, the person needs to understand uh, the security principles of a certain entity. So we need to understand what this data is all about, what the company uh, risks with if this data leaks or is modified, whatever. We come up with a non-realistic amount of metadata if we take into account all of the things. So the following things come up. We cannot do the context analysis when the request is sent. If we don't have time, when this audit uh, is over, 
уже преподсчитать из памяти за скорость. Spend more memory uh, to pay the price of a high speed. So you can do it manually. If, an, if you're in a big company, you wouldn't want to spend too much money on security because we use great volumes and we need to cut down on time. So we optimize everything we can optimize, uh, also the decision making. So you do it manually. <coughs> So, what's next? Uh, there are three parts uh, here. Uh, we have uh, an average, uh, an average situation. Uh, if you remember this curve, which was in the in in the beginning, different types of data have different types of curves, and we can imagine three types of data. Like Like, the calendar table, if we lose the calendar, it does not damage the company what, whatsoever. But if you limit the access to the cal calendar, uh, will cause that uh, the departments will insert their own calendars there and they will lose time and uh, will lose money. On the other hand, there are some uh, personal data, there is some personal data which does not contain mu much use, but If this data leaks, uh, it may be a fatal uh, mistake for the company. So treating this data equally is not logical. Therefore, the conclusion is that we need to have different business processes to different types of data. Sometimes we lose reasoning. When the decision is made, uh, normally the system gives the operator но в этот момент система не знает о том, right to give access, but the system doesn't know why that operator decided to give access or deny the access. It's more important that they will give the access, and for user it doesn't really matter whether they have been given access or not. Uh, so both uh, participants of this process uh, uh, have no value of keeping this reasoning. So, in the future, it will very strongly affect the ability of improving this system, because we don't know why these uh, uh, decisions were made for the automation of uh, the system. So, we lost the data and we can't optimize this process. Uh, the best decision here is to make is to put metadata first. We don't want uh, the operator Uh, to lose uh, access to data. This user gets this access, uh, so we can automate this process. We would like to get rid of uh, the ad hoc triggers when the user comes up and asks for something. We don't have much time to react to that. Uh, so. We would like to change the access policy if something happened to the metadata of the user when uh, the user was transferred to a different department or new data appeared which we would like to use in the entire company. Then we need to decide who needs this data and why and minimize the risk of person coming up and asking for it. After we've analyzed all that, we came up uh, With, with a new access process. So if you have uh, the company's metadata, if we know who does what and who needs what, we can use this data to create new policies that the security department tackles. Uh, uh, they develop this policy. That's the most important thing. When we have changes in the security policy we have developed, all the changes of these policies are put in the system which is responsible for the access uh, control, whether to provide access or not. And the meta model trained with this encapsulates all the logic without including people in this process. If this policy we have just rolled out leads to uh, a user's uh, losing access, we can inform the user about that 
and give uh, them a chance to appeal. So we apologize to the user, uh, sorry about that, but since you have been fired, you, we can no longer provide you access to this information. Please uh, appeal if you like. So in, instead of doing it quietly, uh, we would like to prevent it. This system works uh, automatically and there is always a gap uh, for the lack of data and for our not understanding this whole process. On the other hand, uh, there is uh, access. Uh, get, uh, this is the process of how the user gets access. The system provides for the access to the user and it's done on a very granular level. If there is an incident, uh, if the user still doesn't have access to some metadata, this process uh, looks very linear. Uh, the user with some system would like to get access to the data, he gets a denial, uh, when the system understands that uh, there is an information security uh, access uh, incident uh, is about to arise, we inform people that uh, this user asks for access, but it's not validated. And in this particular moment, the information security departments ne need to find out which metadata lacks in the system. So what? Uh, caused uh, this user for uh, caused this user to ask for access uh, probably there was some mistake in organizing this process probably there was a new task which was not delivered then we find it out we adjust this data and we see that the access was granted and without actually leaving the system uh, the user gets the uh, alert message that uh, access has been granted uh, sorry for inconvenience when there is insufficient information to do that the operator contacts uh, the user then there is something really wrong in this case then i would like to speak about uh, how to develop this system and what promises uh, us uh, uh, that we can pull it off uh, to completely automate this solution. We understood that the system and the number of and the amount of metadata is huge. It's very difficult to establish a trivial model which we would like to keep as simple as possible, even if we would like to work with this uh, volume of data. So all of our charts, all of our tables uh, were tackled uh, gradually. So we understood that this is very heterogeneous data and the approach to different types of data should be different in order to compress our data because we know that we would like to make a decision but the number of the decisions must be limited we split all of the data into layers uh, classic layers like in, in, in every storage but we went from there and we wanted to uh, do the groups depending on the heterogeneity of this data in terms of their security. Uh, whether we really need this data for different tasks, whether they could be grouped beforehand so that we avoid uh, manual regrouping. Uh, I don't know whether you are, you are aware, but in Avito, uh, has an, a huge number of uh, tables because it stores everything in columns because this uh, uh, detailed layer uh, takes too much space in storage. When analyzing this uh, uh, layer, you see that uh, there are three groups. Uh, first of all, the group by hubs, those business essences that uh, are put in the storage. We can say that the business essence uh, uh, has approximately the same uh, damage level in terms of uh, access and uh, having no access. And some parts uh, could be grouped by that. Uh, another part uh, can be grouped by a higher level. 
some domains um, can be combined uh, with one big group. Uh, for example, uh, some reference books, uh, uh, they, they can, can be really sensitive if people lose access to that. And uh, the next thing are critical columns. Uh, if you lose them, the damage can be critical. And you need to protect them very carefully. Apart from uh, this detailed layer, there is a big uh, layer но здесь нам по помощь приходит наш дата каталог и э, так как вся в общем то информация Where внутри хранилища а полнотой helps us. Уже, потому что мы парсим собственно информацию о we parse uh, the information of everything which transfers the windows that shopping windows so all of the markings uh, by windows can be reduced to a very simple task. You inherit this from the objects previously. So the windows are clear transformation. All the data they have uh, uh, had been created previously, previously when the windows were established. Uh, so we can use the different type of marking. We we, we need to map up most critical columns uh, to inherit li lineage from them, so the whole layer gets the marking uh, in terms of uh, security. So it was about marts, uh, and uh, the final layer is uh, metrics. Uh, the metrics uh, are here, they are required here, because the metrics uh, define the trend and each metric uh, has a role which exists uh, and the metrics uh, which uh, uh, explains uh, who is responsible for what, who modifies what. So these marks uh, are about uh, to use the existing metadata so let's talk about uh, the following. So once we've marked uh, this uh, classes, we see the most part of uh, hubs uh, can be uh, marked with organizational structure, org structure. So it will be very tightly closed to the uh, connected to the org structure because most of the risks are related to individual tasks. Uh, we need to understand a certain type of task which requires access. Uh, so we do not connect access to these tables uh, and columns in the org structure, and we can uh, connect it to the individual tasks. Uh, most part of the data marts uh, can be linked to lineage. С другой стороны, кроме таблиц, у нас есть еще пользователи. И пользователи нам интересны с точки зрения того продукта. And uh, the users are interesting to us in terms of the products that we provide them. Процесс доступа. Но процесс доступа... The access process is important. And the access process requires uh, reacting to the changes inside the metadata of the users. Which leads to us knowing that um, the use for data, the need for data use has changed, and we need to do something about it. And uh, you see how frequently and how long they will have to have access to the data. It seems like that the most of the users in storage get access to a limited amount of data, and not very frequently this access uh, changes, because it's the per person who does a very limited scope of functions, their function defines the need for data, and this need uh, changes uh, very seldom. And there is a number of uh, users who get uh, temporary access when access is needed to when access is needed, but finally this access is only needed just for the time when this task is performed. And one final 
a group of users, is analysts, uh, data scientists that very often change their scope and they need to use more and more data in their so it changes for them very frequently. So for those users who very seldom use uh, not very important uh, information, and if they use the data that does not uh, require too much security, we, with minimal costs, uh, take a risk and use uh, reduced uh, security policies to such data, to such users. On the other hand, we have data that have a huge risk of leak, leakage, and uh, we need to handle uh, such data very carefully and try to mitigate uh, the risk with them. And the final group uh, is the data which uh, are high risk uh, and there we, we, here we would like to mitigate and minimize uh, the risk of uh, such data leakage and make this process as safe as possible. I would like to speak about the structure of the data. As we analyzed it, we understood that we need to have a simple abstraction that allows us to predict uh, and store these solutions uh, so that we can quickly and simply reuse them and uh, make this prediction and use process uniform, unified. So we ended up with our policies uh, split into different categories depending on uh, what can be the driver of this policy, what defines the need of the user to get access to them. Judging by the tasks of the projects and processes, we ended up with all of them decomposed. The tasks are all made of subtasks and uh, all these tasks have requirements. Uh, for some tasks, uh, we need certain data. So if we learn to predict uh, the uh, requirements for data, if we learn to predict the fact of them arising, we will end up with a model which will predict uh, the need for access of such and such person to this data, because we may predict that this person uh, will require access to a certain type of data. Then there is a question, what kind of metadata we need to have to run uh, this process? How do we make a decision about which data we need and uh, who is going to get them? We have selected the data for projects this is the classic JIRA, who communicates with whom in chats, etc. Who writes the code, who writes the documentation, what's written in there, which uh, objects have been defined. We need a domain model. Uh, we used our corporate uh, domain division system. We took the organization structure, who reports to whom, horizontally, vertically who takes uh, which positions, uh, we took the logs of the systems, uh, the logs of the systems, and uh, data lineage, uh, showing which data goes where, and where this type of data is used, such and such type of data. Therefore, we came up with the context uh, of the task, the context of the user, context of the method, and the context of the object. Altogether, it's all used to predict uh, the task and predict uh, the need for data. We use this table in this process, and then we see that everybody who is responsible for this process may uh, may need to have access to this particular table. And this service also needs uh, access uh, to the production base, uh, 
to test some of the tasks, uh, to test uh, them. Apart from that, we have a, a prediction system where we identify the needs uh, and tasks, uh, but we can also resolve the problem of quick accessibility. We can accelerate the process so that the user will not notice us on, our, on their way with the two challenges here. We would like to very quickly give access or not give access for that matter and very quickly resolve the problem of storage which helps people uh, to transfer the data. The users use simple solutions and the self-service analysts can transfer data when the data is transferred uh, method data is distorted so something which belongs to one schema turns to another one and the policies are also tuned to only one of them it proves to be a big problem so we resulted in having an architecture that we will be between the user and the system of uh, data access and try to define on the fly what the user is trying to do. And if there, there are changes, we'll try to change our metadata on the go, on the fly, so, so that the system knows where this data goes uh, before the policy is breached and violated. Uh, it's a very trivial process. Uh, we are somewhere between IDE and Vertica, so the moment the person addresses the data, we try to understand what they really would like to do, whether it meets uh, their policy, we need to minimize the role which will be used here in this um, query so that it does not violate the existing policies and we return the results of the request if all of the requirements have been met. If there was a mistake, if there is an error, we would like to resolve this conflict before the user knows that we stopped him. So the moment we understand that there is a violation of the policy, the user of the security system tries to fix the metadata and give this user access and also make the user feel that uh, it's just not a major bug. Uh, the, the user request uh, and user query uh, is analyzed for what kind of task uh, he's trying to achieve. So we try to combine the, the knowledge of what this person does with what he is currently doing. Then we understand what's allowed for this person and what's not allowed. What's wrong about us, what's wrong about the user. As soon as we understand that everything's good, we give the user the rights uh, and give him the chance to transfer uh, the, da the data he would like to get access to. Let me skip some slides. Uh, I guess uh, this is it. Uh, uh, no, just a little bit more left. Uh, anyway, in the summary, I would like to say that there is a big challenge in task. We understand that we need to do it. And uh, very often, the problem of uh, getting access to data and data of the analysts is painful because analysts are uh, agents uh, that require a lot of data and it's very difficult to understand what is happening with them and we really wanted to resolve this problem being an analyst myself uh, so we decided uh, to start uh, our jo journey uh, carefully so that we would not uh, make very abrupt uh, decisions not all of the classes of users have been covered yet with these policies, but uh, we have completely cut off access uh, to that for some objects and some users. Without, uh, of course, we've had a 
a few issues there, so we will fix them and we will explain. Uh, we will, of course, implement what I have described. We have reduced uh, the number of the objects uh, by 90%, uh, that not uh, uh, those uh, that, that help, uh, that require the manual processing re have been reduced by 90%. 70% of the users do not uh, want a dynamic science approach uh, because their access does not uh, change much and we can um, do the lineage uh, faster than the data, data is required. So we have very quickly singled out the parts that we can cut off and we've cut off approximately 20% um, of the access right without any incidents, uh, uh, the non-availability, non-accessibility non uh, incidents. Um, so in the end, I should say that metadata is very useful. Uh, if they are unaccessible, is as bad as if they are over-accessible. So please uh, recover and utilize metadata because metadata uh, really help you optimize the processes uh, that somehow do not relate to metadata as such. So please manage the risk of unaccessibility. We need the, the next slide. Oh, this presentation is, is a little bit obsolete. Okay, let's start with questions. What if the user has become a victim of the attack and the intruder gets the data uh, that uh, the victim uh, needs for their work? Uh, so I, I repeat this question once again. Uh, at the time when uh, the user understands uh, that his account has been compromised, uh, they can quite simply, uh, without actually leaving the system, report that they need to close access to their account. That's the simplest solution. What are the open source tools that are recommended by you? We are looking for open agent, open policy. OPA. What about what about CDAR? We are comparing right now. So I think we will use open source. Uh, I'll come to you to, to talk about it. What's worse, uh, to give extra access to some minor data or, gra uh, or deprive of uh, the access? I think depri deprivation of the access is dangerous because it may lead to bigger uh, damage because the chance that the people utilize the access to the wrong data is less than the chance that the person deprived of the access uh, of the important data. I understand. Thank you. Our RVM pixel segmentations and uh, the data matching uh, to find uh, similar data. How to do that? Well, uh, the acronyms you've read uh, are, com are, complete, uh, are, are completely unknown to me. Would you please explain what these acronyms stand for? Uh, I think it's the part of the data analysis that we have. Uh, I think we try to do that. Maybe you have questions here on the floor. No questions. No more questions, rather. Uh, then you'll have to select uh, the best questions from the list. I think it's about the victim of the attack. Uh, Piotr Semendilov. It was asked by Piotr uh, Semendilov. Uh, if you are here, please come up uh, to us to get your prize. You are here. Excellent. Alexey, thank you very much.